Hello and thanks for joining me again. Uh, today I'm going to tie a small shrimp pattern for the rivers. It's lightly weighted and what I have in the vise at the moment is a Hanak 330 barbless hook in size 12. Um, this is a medium wired hook but I'm going to add some weight to it using adhesive lead foil. So I'm just going to take a little strip of that off, making sure I pick up the correct scissors for this because uh, I don't want to blunt my good scissors and I'm just going to take a little slither off the edge of the foil. That slides straight off and I'm going to just catch it in using my nail to hold in the first wrap and then I can bring it, once I've got it going, I can bring it up the shank of the hook and I want to stop just about there. So I'm about two or three millimeters back from the eye. I'm going to use my nail to press in on the adhesive foil. So I've still got a bit left here and I'm going to just come up about an eighth of an inch of where I started and I'm going to catch in another wrap and I'm going to stop just shy of where I finished before and to finish it off I can come back on itself like so so I've got I've made my my shrimp body it might look a bit messy but that's not to not to worry about that because I am going to cover it with uh, thread and obviously body material. So next, the thread I'm going to use today is um, the Ultimate Tine Silk from Fish On. This is the um, a deep purpley one. And before I start with this, I'm just going to coat the whole thing in super glue. Now once I've tied the thread on, this just stops any movement in the shank. So I'll just catch that in. And this part takes a little bit of time, so please bear with me. I just want to get a few wraps on, hold it into place. Over enthusiastic there and you can see what it gives you is quite a a good shape for the shrimp body just got a little bit too much super glue on there and just take that off my finger and there we go I'll just take away uh, my waist at the end here now you can buy hooks um, that are um, preformed with the lead on. Uh, I have tried them, but it doesn't give you much versatility. The size of the lead on the hook is the size of the fly you've got to tie, whereas if you do it yourself, you get a lot more um, versatility. So next, for my rib, I'm going to use some uh, just cheap £5 fluoro. It's, uh, you can buy it in any coarse fishing shop. It's dead reasonable, and, and this is what I use for my ribbon on my shrimp patterns. So I'm just going to catch that in next. Now I'm going to bring my thread to the front because I want this to run the length of the body. And this is just so that I get a nice even finish on the fly. So I can bring that down. And once I've got down to the bottom, I'm going to come halfway up. Next, I'm going to tie in my shell back, uh, and I'm going to use virtual nymph skin for this. Uh, the one I'm going to use is the, you can see two colours in the packet there. This is the packet for the olive green, but I also have um, my tan back in there as well. So I've, I've taken a piece already. Um, I don't know how, how well you can see on the camera, but on this nymph skin, there's little sparkly bits in the back there. I don't know if you can see that, but um, 
trust me when I tell you it's there. Next, I'm going to cut a small V into my nymph skin, like so. And then I'm going to catch my thread just at the edge of that. Make sure it's well caught. And then what you can do is you can then stretch it. And that just cuts down on the bulk of the rib. And then you can bring it down to the butt section of your fly. I'll just go over that slightly. Now, dubbing for shrimp. I like to use squirrel a lot. And I also like to experiment a little. So what I've done today is I've taken some of uh, Andrew's scruffy dubbing. The trout stalker. And uh, this is the, the Grafham shrimp blend and I've taken some of this it's like a purple I don't know where I've got it from but it was two pounds sixty um, it's like a purple glister material and I've simply um, blended them together until I was happy that I've got the right mix and all I've done is with my fingers ripped it up like this and I've got what I've got now um, if you're mass producing flies it might well be that a cheap old coffee grinder um, with a whole packet in would give you the dubbing for hundreds of flies but I only tie in small batches for myself so I just use my fingers and it, it works fine. So I'm just going to take a bit of this dubbing off and I can start to work it onto the thread. Now if you've mixed it in the right quantities it'll dub on no problem. If you've got too much of the glister, you might find it causes you some issue. But I've got it about right. So I'm gonna bring my, my thread to the bottom of my fly now and start to work the body up. And usually, I would have to add more dubbing, but in this case, I seem to have got that bang on the money. I'm just going to adjust the, the hook in the vise slightly, because I'm now going to start working at a different angle. And that went remarkably well. Usually, um, there's not enough dubbing, and I've got to add a little bit more, but in this case, it's worked out okay. I've left plenty of room at the front, and the next thing to do then is bring my shell back over the top. Now I just want to catch that in with one turn and before I go any further I'm just going to add a little bit of wax to my thread to ensure I get plenty of grip at the front here because I've got this under tension now and if I was to let it go it would just spring back on me and I would lose all the work I've done with that shell back. Now I've come to the front and I've got in front of my material and I'm just going to put a small half hitch in to hold my thread in place. I can adjust that now on top, excuse my fingers while I play about with it a bit. And what I want to do is now remove my waist. Got to be very careful when you're doing this. You don't want to catch it so that it pings back. So I've managed to do that without uh, ruining the fly. Because I've got the half hitch in, I can still play about a bit with this. I'm going to just bring everything to the back and catch that in. Now I can bring up my clear rib. And I want about an eighth of an inch apart on my turns here. So all in all, I should have about five turns of this. It's a great little pattern. This uh, It's not all about the big tungsten beads and stuff. You can uh, catch a lot of fish on lightly weighted flies, especially in the skinny water. And with the summer being here, there's quite a lot of skinny water around. So I've caught that in now, 
just going to make sure that I've got it and once more I'm going to just adjust my hook in the vise so that I can get right up to the eye here so I'm going to remove my waist and tidy up everything at the head I'm not overly worried about um, making too big a head here but once I've got it so that I'm happy I'm just going to come in and finish with a couple of half hitches if you have the skills to use the whip finish tool now is the time to use that okay so I've got that and I just want to finish off the fly now but before I do that I'm going to use a pro marker this is brown although it says henna it's brown uh, and I'm going to color up my head and the first section first two sections sorry off my shrimp just going to turn that so that I can see what I'm doing so that's nice and coloured now then a little touch of UV resin I'm using Solaris for this um, simply because the brush is just it just makes life easier to, to get the the UV on to the fly Like so, happy enough with that. Come in with my torch and cure the UV resin. Now, I know what you're thinking, it doesn't look much like a shrimp at the moment, but that's because I've not brushed out the legs. So I'm just going to move the, the vise again and I'm going to get my brush in here right under the fly and I'm going to brush out the legs. Now I can just about grab the ends and get any erroneous fibers out the other way of doing it of course is you can cut it but I think it looks more natural when you just pull pull out the ends like this just got a little stray fiber there that I'm gonna cut away and there you have your shrimp pattern all finished Hope you enjoyed that. Um, it works well with clink and dink and even on its own just fished as a single fly. Thanks very much for watching.